Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and one of the things you learn about when you get into 3D printing is something called infill percentage, and that's the percentage of the inside of the model you're printing that's considered plastic. And I think your infill percentage is too much, and I think you're wasting plastic, and I'm gonna tell you why. You ready? Go. Mm. Hey guys, how's it going? Yeah, it's not Red Bull today. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't find any. I'm gonna have to go to the store tomorrow. When you're printing 3D models, one of the terms that you use is infill percentage, and that's the percentage of plastic that's solid inside the model. Typically, people will say, oh, you know, print with 20%, it'll be stronger, or, oh, I go 50% for strength. And some people will say, I'm gonna print my parts at 95% because I just, I want it to be strong. And I think higher percentages don't always mean a much stronger model. And I don't think higher percentages are always needed depending on what the model is going to be used for. In today's example, I'm gonna use a model of Pikachu to show you how you can get away with absolutely no infill whatsoever. Let's go to Simplify 3D. All right, here we go. We've got Simplify 3D loaded, and here you can see our Pikachu model on the build plate. Hi, Pikachu. This is a cute little model made by Flowalistic. Flowalistic? I think, I think that's his name. I'll put the Thingiverse link down in the description. It's a good little model. Let's see, what can I tell you about it? It is currently 30 by 47 and it's just under 60 millimeters tall. What I was gonna tell you about infill though, here, let's do this. Infill percentage, I'm gonna take this up to 20%. I'm gonna prepare to print so you can see the insides. So here is the model. And if I start reducing this, you'll see that the inside is filled. I used fast honeycomb and that's what you see inside the model. The infill is used as a as a, as a building block or as a stabilization method for, for the, the entire model and it adds strength and it lets the model print in ways that it normally wouldn't be able to print. I think that, I think that it's important to note that some models have to have infill in order to print. However, some do not. Here's something interesting. As we, as we move the layers up, we see that we see this, this right here. And this green, this green here is is trying to put together trying to put together a solid layer because the slope of the head is pretty heavy. And sometimes you think, well, maybe it needs to rest on the infill itself in order to make that happen. Most 3D printers have active cooling though, and so as it's laying down this plastic, it may not be perfect, but it's going to still lay down and it's still going to attach to the sidewall and be there for the rest of the plastic to build upon. Again, if it's inside your model, you really don't care that it looks like, you just care that it works. Pikachu, Pikachu, Pikachu. Let's take the model back and choose zero for an infill percentage and see what happens. Now as we scale back, we see the model's hollow. There's nothing on the inside. Absolutely nothing. It's just a hollow shell. So with this in mind, you would think the model isn't very strong. However, I'm giving it three perimeters all the way around of solid plastic. So even though there's no, there's no infill in the center to provide support, this model, the way it's designed, and the way that the outer perimeters lay down, it's going to provide some strength. And I'll show you after I print it. Well, here we go. This is Pikachu. This is Pikachu without any infill. Let's print it out and let's see what happens. Well, Pikachu's off the printer and he's, he's a tiny little guy, but look at that. There is no infill in him whatsoever. And I can't, oh, I broke an ear off, but you see how hard I had to do that? There, there's the ear, look at that. Pikachu is now without an ear. The, the model is still fantastically strong and there's absolutely no infill. There is no plastic in here. All I did was what I said with three perimeters around the outside and on the top where I showed you it could be a little bit thin, it's filled in just fine. But, well, Pikachu can't hear now. Sad. Don't worry, this is 3D printing. I printed another and I have GMAX printers, so I printed another. It's much larger. There is no infill 
and this one either. This Pikachu was sized up 300%. It's the same three perimeters around the model, but look how big it is. I'm not gonna break his ear off. I already feel bad enough about killing that other one. Yeah, look at that. Look how big and solid and strong this model is. So, in conclusion, consider reducing the amount of plastic by reducing your infill percentage. You may be able to get away with less, which will then save the amount of plastic you have on your roll, and it should save you money, and everybody will be happier. I hope this was helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you thought it was helpful. Share this video with your friends if you think they're wasting plastic. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you're not, and as always, high five.